Hey, Joseph, do you remember when we were at Fort Benning, Georgia, mm-hmm. Home, mm-hmm. home of the infantry, <laughs> where uh, we had in, in, in the summer, we had a drag show to build morale of the soldiers at at the home of the infantry, the queen of battle. I think they've taken the term queen of battle and they've turned it into something that it, it, it isn't. I, if you mean dragging the rucksack up Mount Mother... <laughs> I remember that a lot. <laughs> exactly. But apparently in 2022, we actually have queens of battle. <laughs> and we're having drag shows at, at military bases. It has taken on a whole new meaning. Queen of battle follow. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Uh, Can you imagine if you took, say, I don't know, 100 rangers and walked them into... Um, uh, what's the name of that stadium over by, um, it's by Sand Hill. I can't remember the name of it. There's that, it's an open, where you would do the the drills, you know, and you, but it had. Uh, yeah, I, I can't remember. I know what you're talking about. The could you imagine amphitheater the, thing? Yeah, if yeah. they turned that into a drag show, how do you think that would go down? Well, they'd, they'd probably knock 10 of them up. <laughs> 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 they would steal four of them. They'd break three of them, <laughs> and then they'd lose the rest of them. <laughs> if I remember correctly. I just, no, I, 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 I'm I, just, exa- I can't, I'm, I'm exasperated. What, what the hell is happening with our military? What are they doing? Well, it, are they trying to lose wars? Well, they they want to destroy the military. I mean, I recall, what else could it be? I recall a 20-year sojourn <laughs> through Afghanistan we just completed about... <laughs> Nine months ago, <laughs> that um, didn't end well. Apparently, w- what the f is going on? Well, that's what you do if you want to destroy a a, a military. That's what exactly what you do. I mean, I can't imagine that anybody, even the most staunch liberal, would say, "What do you think would be good for a military practice?" I don't know, drag shows. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're about to go to war with China. So look, they've got like a very well defined three prong mission battle that they've practiced um, over and over again to invade Taiwan. What would be the best way to resist, say, the amphibious assault that they have planned on both the southern and northern ends of Taiwan when they invade? Well, first would be to deploy people with proper pronouns. <laughs> um, make sure there's no gluten around. It'll destroy everybody. Um, Everyone has to have a pair of high heels because apparently that is essential equipment. Now that's in your TA fifty. Yeah, <laughs> we saw the uh, the OCS cadets candidates. Yes, that wearing high heels to a in uniform in in uh, the BDUs. Okay, not BDUs anymore. Dated myself on that one, but just to, <laughs> in the, in the camouflage uniform here. Here we go. Yeah, just okay. to play it for the audience, just so they know what we're talking about. And and here they are. They're, they're you know. They're going to a uh, sexual harassment class. Okay, but they had to wear... But isn't that sexual harassment itself, in and of itself... Oh, oh, of course it is. To to impose the gender practices of another gender on, like, another gender. Isn't that part of sexual harassment? Yeah, go go to a racial sensitivity class in blackface. I mean, (laughs) that's exactly what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. But But they're they're going to to male soldiers and saying, we want you have to dress like a woman or you're not going to pass um, your cadet class here. You're not going to be an officer in this here army. (laughs) (laughs) What kind of, what the hell is going on? I still, I'm shocked. I, I'm revulsed by what's going on here. Well, it's obvious that it's a plan to, to hurt the military. Nobody in the right mind would think that a organization that should just be, um, protecting America, learning to and thinking about killing people all day long because that's what you do in war. Do you think Chinese that, that, soldiers that, sit around debating the proper amount of makeup that they need to apply before they assault an objective? Say, you know, uh, if it's an aircraft carrier or uh, yeah, I'm I'm sure it it it, it plagues the Chinese military political correctness. Yeah, and to make sure that the the male soldiers are wearing the right colored <clears throat> lipstick when assaulting the objective to invade Taiwan. Yeah, well, it's just ab- absurd. Absurd. You know, it's just ridiculous. Nobody everybody knows that they're doing it just to and they put these guys in these high heels to humiliate them. 
And that's all they did. Why, why do they think it's a good idea to humiliate our own soldiers like this? This is, this, that is what this is, humiliation. And they know that's what they're doing. Yeah, they're, they're males. They need to be humiliated. All that, they're trying to get that toxic masculinity out of them, I suppose. That stuff that wins wars. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, we can't have that. You can't crush the enemy's skull. No, no, no. <laughs> that's the army of the past. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to kill, to kill, to kill without mercy is yeah, no longer yeah, exactly. What the, makes the what makes the glass grow? Blood, blood, blood. <laughs> What's the spirit of the bayonet? Tacky mob. <laughs> <laughs> what is the spirit of the bayonet these days? I don't even yeah, know. It's to do. Well, it used to be kill, kill, kill with cold, cold steel. Right now, it's I don't know. Identify genders properly <laughs> when not to assume gender. At all. I, I, I well, no, they use it to apply makeup think. now. That's that's the spirit of the bayonet. To rouge, to rouge, <laughs> to rouge without mercy. <laughs> oh, my God. We're going to lose the next war, Joseph. Yes. Are you learning Chinese? What? what, like what? Are you learning Cantonese or Mandarin? <laughs> so we can, <laughs> we can survive in the uh, concentration camp we're going to get sent to. <laughs> and just a, a quick word to our new Chinese overlords. <laughs> We would like to help you. <laughs> you. You might be in need of a uh, internet personality uh, who could turn other people in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Our Chinese overlords. <laughs> Remember, the Japanese didn't want to invade in World War II because behind every blade of, of grass there would be a rifle. Now, that's what uh, was it, Admiral Yamamoto? Yeah. Said mm -hmm. they're doing. They're desperately trying to eliminate that, aren't they? They well, want the to they gun want, buyback program. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, but making them illegal, you know, with this assault weapons ban that they're trying to uh, impose now, because, um, and I'm just going to say this, I'm, I'm going to give her credit as credit is due. I don't believe that there is a grand conspiracy theory to program young teenage boys into becoming mass murderers through the application of psychotropic drugs and SSRIs, you know, with a psychologist who, you know, might program them into believing something that is divorced from reality so that they feel that the only outlet for their internal rage is to pick up a gun and kill their fellow students. I'm not suggesting that that is possible, but what I am suggesting is that, like Alex Jones so eloquently put, they're taking a box of Black Widow spiders and they're tossing them into the house. Now, they're not telling the spiders who to bite how to bite, when or where. They just know they will eventually. I think maybe that might be what's going on because they know out there, there are people who are psychologically imbalanced and that if you apply the right SSRI, if you apply the right amount of psychotropic medication, that person will eventually crack and become psychotically suicidal. That is to say, They'll kill people around them and then they'll kill themselves. I believe that that science has been perfected by both the CIA and the Department of Defense, you know, through that MK Ultra program mm -hmm. back in the 50s and the 60s when they started experimenting on soldiers with LSD and, you know, other psychotropic medications mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to try to figure out how to manipulate both the conscious and the subconscious. Right, And so I think what we're starting to see is the manifestations of that perfected science of, of psychological manipulation. And they're you know, creating little time bombs throughout our society. And then they feed them weapons. Because for the life of me, I can't understand. Because I was a 17, 18, 19 year old boy at one time in my life. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't afford a four. I was too, all three of them. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't afford a $4,500 <clears throat> assault rifle a Daniel Defense assault rifle, which is a really, really well-made, mm -hmm. high art kind of assault rifle. Yet somehow that's what, um, you know, that one kid had. Was in, a, in a Uvalde? I don't know. It wasn't Uvalde. It was uh, one of the, it may have been Uvalde, but I got to look it up. But one of the guys that was involved in that, in a mass shooting, he was he had a Daniel Defense assault rifle. Yeah, a lot of police officers have those because it's a really good gun. Yeah. And then the you know you had the mass shooter uh, at the Batman movie I think it was in Colorado and he yeah he had like fourteen thousand dollars worth of of firearms and ammunition and body armor 
and he had no job. He was a graduate student. Who, who magically, when no other graduate student in his program got a federal grant for money, magically got a federal grant for money that he then used to go buy firearms, ammunition, and body armor. I mean, you know what I'm saying? That, so I, I'm, I'm just suggesting that maybe, just maybe in this country, certain people who want to see our, our nation fall apart to be destroyed, they're throwing a, a box of Black Widow spiders into our house and then they don't actually have to program the spiders. They just they just sit back and wait. Mm -hmm. And then when one of the spiders bites, you know, they want to make the spider illegal. Right. Or they wanna they want to make the the technique the spider uses illegal. And, that, and I think that's really what's happening is um with all these gun control laws that, you know, they they just have to sit back and wait for the tragedy. They they know is going to happen. I mean, mm -hmm. for example, the 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 guy who murdered all those uh, people at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando, Florida, mm -hmm. right? His father was a paid informant of the FBI. Mm -hmm. Small world. Well, I mean, ha how many active shooters that, are, that make the news are not involved with the FBI in somehow, some shape or form or fashion, or a family member? I think like Adam Lanza's psychologist or something was was working with the FBI or providing advice to the FBI. I mean, which, which the Vegas shooter, I think, was the oh. only one that I can say that didn't. And there's how much information on him? Zero. Exactly. <laughs> and that's the other one that perplexes me. What the hell ever happened to the Las Vegas shooting investigation? We were supposed to receive a public report on everything surrounding that event and how it took place. And they were going to explain to us how one person was able to take out the window at the Mandalay Bay. You know, where was the, where did the window go? I mean, to this mm -hmm. day, people don't seem to understand the mechanics behind the shooting. Uh, like, how did he remove the window without the hotel noticing? How was he <laughs> able to stay in this room without somebody from I the cleaning it. crew walking in at least once within the 72 hours he was there? Not one person from the cleaning crew went in to, to see, oh, you know, make the bed, mm -hmm. you know, because you know, I've been to Vegas a lot mm -hmm. and not a 12-hour period goes by that somebody doesn't walk into your room, whether you're at... Exactly. I mean, I was even at Mandalay Bay I mean, years ago, but... And, you know, somebody from the cleaning crew is always coming into your room to either make your yeah. bed. Try, try smoking a cigar in there. <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll come, <laughs> and, you know, they'll, they'll catch you, much less uh, hoard a, a, a cache of weapons and ammunition. Yeah. It just seems like there's... Set up cameras in the hallway. Every, every one of these mass shootings <clears throat> is, is always the result of some perfect storm of incompetence. Mm-hmm. And it, 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 at some point, it, it stops looking like negligence, and it starts looking like deliberate indifference to me. Certainly, well, it's I, bl I believe it's it's uh, not even deliberate indifference. I believe it is it is calculated. And I think there's so that I, honestly, I believe that there is a deliberate effort to destroy the military, mm -hmm. to corrupt people's confidence in law enforcement, to corrupt people's influence in the criminal justice system, in the civil justice system. Certainly. And it's kind of just this broad-based, I mean, I don't want to go so far as to say it's it's only George Soros or something like that who's, you know, funding all these leftist district attorneys who are, you know, completely corroding our mm -hmm. ability to prosecute criminals in our own country. And as a result, crime is just, you know, going crazy. But there's, you know, there's a certain amount of complicity in the public too by allowing it to happen and not not themselves voting against it or trying to stop it. But that's just what I've noticed is, is everything is being thrown at us all at once. And we either want to turn away from it because we don't want to confront it because we don't want to be seen as the, as the homophobe. You don't want to be seen as the racist. You don't want to be seen as the sexist. You don't want to be seen as the transphobe. You don't want to be seen as, you know, whatever um, jingoism they want to throw at you or epithet they want to throw mm -hmm. at you to try to alienate your your opinion or your point of view on a particular topic. So they'll just throw an epithet at you. And, mm -hmm. and you know, white Republicans are the worst. They'll just run for the closet to try to, oh, I'm not a racist. And, yeah, they're, they're, they're the biggest threat. White supremacists are yeah. the biggest threat in America. Yeah, right because now. that's who flew our planes into the World Trade Center on 9-11 was why a bunch of white nationals. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure. And so it, we've just seen this kind of Orwellian doublespeak that has kind of taken over the entire national conversation to the point that people can't even think straight. And now we have drag shows 
on military bases and everybody thinks it's okay and it's not, I just don't think it's okay. Not that I have a problem with gay people. Mm -hmm. Not that I have a problem with people who are drag queens. C couldn't care less. Keep it out of my military because the military's job is to blow up things and kill people. Yeah, the, essentially that's that's it. That's how you protect a country is you know how to blow up stuff and kill people. And if you're not recruiting people who want to blow up stuff and kill people, your military is not going to be effective. Mm -hmm. no, I don't care what you do. Because like we've talked about with the officers at, at Uvalde, I think is a perfect example. You can hire all of the alleged hard chargers you think you have or want, but when it comes down to nut cutting time mm -hmm. and they stand in the hallway, instead of assaulting the objective, you get a bunch of dead innocent children, right? Yep. Well, that, that's exactly what they're doing to the military. It, it, you know, you, 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 they aren't recruiting because the army can't even meet its recruiting goals because for, you know, gosh, for 20 years, 30 years now, they've been saying, you're a racist, you're a racist, you're a racist. Now come die for your country. <laughs> well, I don't want to die for a country that thinks I'm a racist, mm -hmm. but I think that's part of it. That mm -hmm. they know that that's the byproduct. Certainly. The, the byproduct of the FBI. <clears throat> of state police and local police saying that the biggest threat to this country are white nationalists. Well, there's only one kind of person who can who can even qualify to be a white nationalist. You have to be white and you have to believe in your country. But those are the people who are most likely to join the military to defend it. Mm -hmm. So they're alienating the very group that since this country began, was the group who, you know, you know, fathers would tell their sons, hey, I was in the military. You know, it's a worthy cause to defend this country. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and so you, you train your sons to assume the risk of that danger because it is. Mm -hmm. um, soldiers die in peacetime as much as they die in war. Yeah, these days, yeah, exactly. And so it's a risk all year round. And consequently, you now have parents I know personally who are telling their sons, don't join the military, do not join the military. And you have soldiers in the military telling people, don't join the military. A retired military folks now who just recently retired telling their kids, do not join the military. Yeah. And every, everybody sees the corruption. Nobody wants to call it out. Everybody sees the, the, the self-inflicted destruction, but nobody wants to call it out. I don't care what you're personal pro proclivities are. If, if you're straight, if you're gay, I don't care. If you want to kill people and blow up things and you're good at it and you want to make a living in a structured organization that has leadership as its you know primary mission oriented goal is to provide leadership to a, another group of men who are going to assault an objective that is a threat to our national security or is a threat to our freedom, then that's what we need to be recruiting and that's the message that needs to be put out. And that's not what they're putting out. And that, it honestly, it concerns me. Mm -hmm. It only concerns me because <clears throat> there's 1.4 billion people on the other side of the planet that don't like us mm -hmm. and they want to see us die. And if you read the Asia Times, if you read um, what comes out, on those Chinese, well, whatever leaks out on those Chinese mm -hmm. um, social media platforms like WeChat and other, like, like, other things like that. They hate the United States of America. They want to see us die and we are happily killing ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I just don't understand it. And it's, we're, too, we're just, I don't know, we're too reluctant to see it. I guess we don't want to accept the new truth. Anyhow. Let's all sit back and enjoy our self-destruction. Um, if anyone spots a mushroom cloud and on the horizon, um, you know, depending on your distance from the mushroom cloud, uh, you know, you'll probably have about 15 to 20 minutes before the radioactive dust starts to fall back on you. Remember, um, the jet stream runs from west to east. So your best bet is probably to run west. So when China and Russia, you know, start nuking our country because we can no longer defend ourselves, you're, you need to move against the jet stream because that's what's going to carry the radioactive particles either towards you or away from you. And, and just as you see it, be sure and click on our video and like it before. 
<laughs> it hits you. Yeah, that's 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 all, that's all that matters. <laughs> we'll see you in the next video. <laughs>